Quentin and I take to the open road along the Pacific Coast Highway. Oh, oh my God! The comedy legend that is Jennifer Saunders tests out the classic she has always wanted. It would be the perfect first try. Oh, don't do that, you fool. And Bruno Senna is back out on track, taking another icon to the limit. This one's looking like the shape of a legend. Hello and welcome to the Classic Car Show. From our secret Brooklyn's lair, we have another show jam-packed with Classic Car Sparkle. Of course, we always start the show with a car hand-picked by Quentin from his list of all-time classic favourites. The car he has chosen has a huge following in the US, just like Quentin, has been a star in many TV shows just like Quentin, and shows no sign of slowing down or losing popularity. Oh, sorry, over to you, Quentz. Hell hath no fury like a supermodel scorned. <laughs> the car I have chosen is so timeless, it is the automotive equivalent of the little black dress. The novelist P.J. O'Rourke once wrote, there are a number of mechanical devices which increase sexual arousal, particularly among women. Chief of these is the Mercedes-Benz SL Convertible. The SL began life as the car of mistresses and trophy wives. But you'd think that after 40 years, that soft feminine image would have faded away like all beauty queens. But it hasn't. SLs still radiate a coiffured, perfumed elegance and real men don't eat quiche or drive Mercedes SLs. Or do they? But Mercedes designed the R107 SL as a tough, fast autobahn blaster with strong V8 and straight-six engines. Power outputs got bigger and bigger, culminating in the 560 SL that could crack a very masculine 145. The SL was also Mercedes' longest running car, sold for 18 years to 240,000 grateful buyers. That's an awful lot of mistresses. What all those macho blokes don't realise is that the SL has always been better than money in the bank. They've always depreciated at the speed of a rampaging glacier. This is a 1986 420 SL, and back in 1986, it cost £29,000. It has just been sold for 28 large. This is the car that just refuses to depreciate. And that's partly because in the 70s and 80s flash bulbs of fame, there was always an SL. JR and Bobby Ewing drove them in Dallas. They were in the opening sequence of Heart to Heart, plus a zillion other US TV shows and Hollywood movies. For me, the most astonishing thing about this car is that it never did that thing that second-hand cars do, which is a sad swallow dive into rusty worthlessness. It began production in the flower power era, finished it in acid house, and in those two decades and the two decades that follow it, it's always been on people's wanted lists. It's always made its money. Could this then be that rich and strange thing? The perfect car. And as well as being timeless, the SL was tough. This was one of the first Mercs to have a crumple zone and a passenger safety cell. The front screen was so strong it doubled as a roll bar, and that neat hardtop was so heavy you needed two friendly weightlifters to heave it off. Even the interior was engineered like no other car. SL seats have this miracle material called MB Tex, which is a kind of imitation leather, and it's the upholsterer's equivalent of Kevlar. 
And the carpets, the weave is so tight and so dense that they literally wear away at the speed of paving stones. So this really is one of the best built Mercedes of the post-war era. And they used to call it, in the factory, one and a half tons worth of der Panzerwagen. And as we know, the Germans know a thing or two about building tanks. hard men out there who still think the SL is far too girly. I'm sorry, but the girls are right. This is that rare thing, a common sense classic car that you don't have to suffer to drive. It's snug, it's reliable, it's fast, and it will make you money. What is feminine, soft, blousy, or daft about that? Nothing. This car makes sense from every perspective. Now here's the thing, you can still go out and buy a decent SL for 5,000 quid. This is a 1981 380 SL. It's done 115,000 miles, but I am enjoying that SL magic. It still feels good, it still feels tight, it still pulls nicely. Here we go, kick down. Whoa! But here's the question, at 5,000 quid, why wouldn't you? In fact, I've just convinced myself I've got to go out and buy one of these cars now. It just feels so good. I've just got one thing to do here. There, that feels better. But to really test the SL's timeless class, we have to do what's known as the valet parking test. If you've got a cool car, a hotel car jockey will always park it out the front, but if it's rubbish, you get relegated to the multi-storey round the back. So here we are, posh hotel, gravel drive. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna bury it, or is he going to display it proudly out front? Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, our SL has passed the ultimate test and he's parked it there because it looks so totally on the money. The SL from the 1980s would either be a classic red Chanel handbag um, or a really sexy pair of red Manolo Blahnik pointy shoes that make your legs look brilliant, just like the SL. It's not a woman's car at all. Um, there are many hairdressers' cars around at the moment that um, are meant to be cars for men, and they're not. Um, and I've heard it said that it's a woman's car, but it's not at all. It's a guy's car, fantastic car. I feel like, you know, sometimes you hit the nail on the head with, with everything. You know, it could be a jeans brand like Levi's, or it could be, you know, a, a car, a classic car like the SL, where they just get, they capture a moment in time and it just sticks. Let's face it, when it comes to all things visual and matters of style, women do these things so much better than we men. And all those trophy wives and mistresses back in the 70s, they made this car an instant classic because they knew. They knew it was a sexual message written on handmade paper. And women are also very, very good at spotting hard-wearing, timeless classics. The SL is the automotive equivalent of a pair of Louboutin stilettos or a Chanel handbag because it never, ever goes out of style. The world would be a much, much duller place without the Mercedes SL. And we blokes, well, we'd all be driving round in poo brown Porsches.
intense, very in touch with your feminine side. Who knew? I'm a closet feminist. Yeah. Women know so much about style. I have a oh, soft spot for their soft spots. <laughs> but I also have a soft spot for that SL because Beautiful. it is such an all-round classic. And yeah. they won't be that cheap for long, Joe. They are going up as we speak. Yeah. And one would suit you. Looking at that, I suddenly went, right, that is it. I've got to get one. Because they're so timeless, so beautiful. And you could use it every day. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're off to a stylish start. But stay with us as Quentin and myself go very Thelma and Louise on our biggest road trip yet. Coming up, our Pacific Coast Highway adventure gets underway. The beginning. Our national treasure, Jennifer Saunders, drives an Italian national treasure. This, to me, is the perfect little city car. And Bruno Senna is gunning for the fastest lap around Brooklands. It's one of the most beautiful cars ever made. Now, in between shows, Quentin and myself have a lot of time to talk about what car we want to test and, of course, where we want to visit. And, as you can imagine, there's a lot of arguing, cattiness, name-calling, throwing of telephones. But there was one road that we both agreed we simply had to travel. And I won the resulting coin toss and got to choose the car. This is a 1968 Buick LeSabre the ultimate all-American V8-powered cruiser. And you can hire super cool classic cars like this one and travel on one of the world's greatest roads. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So I have the car, I've got the road trip planned, all I need is the Thelma to my Louise. Baby, what do you think? It's a 1968 Buick Le Sabre. It's fantastic. Oh, I was so worried that you were going to be very moody. I know, because I was a bit late. Not very good Jenny, at you, I mean, it's just, whoa. Yeah? Come on, let's hit the road, Jack. Oh, let's get it in the right gear. Off we go. I know you don't know really what we're going to do for a couple of days, so I would like to take you on the ultimate road trip. I want to take you all the way to San Francisco on the Pacific Coast Whoa, Highway. PCH, Highway the PCH. 1. The aim of our road trip is to take on the Pacific Coast Highway from downtown LA all the way up the 400 miles of beautiful coastline to San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge in three days. But before we hit the freeway, I had a treat in store for Quentin. Actor, producer, racing driver, star of Karate Kid, and son of Hollywood legend Chad McQueen. Hey! Hey, kid, how are you? I'm all right, how are you? Good, I'm glad you called. Good to see you, oh, baby. So lovely you to look great, you too. You. How's everything? Very, very good. Hey, man. This Chad. is Quentin. Pleasure. How are you doing? You Honor. too, Chad. Paul. Thank you, thank you. I wanted to put you guys together because Quentin is a huge fan. Okay. I'm an open book, whatever you want. <laughs> so your father was just one of the most incredible car guys in the world. We're heading up to San Francisco. Bullet, it was filmed there. It is still one of the most iconic car chases ever. It's never been surpassed. I mean, it's been, what, almost 50 years now, and that film still, it's the best car chase ever on film. It's just legendary. Nothing has ever come close to that. And that Highland Green GT 67 Mustang, your dad and that car are one. We have good taste, man. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you'd like each other. <laughs> so look, we're going to do the PCH, America's greatest road. Tell us. You know, uh, I think I'll pass on a ride, no offense. <laughs> But you think we're going to blend in OK? I think uh, you'll stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. Uh, you're going to love it. Santa Barbara, Carmel, San Fran. Enjoy and be safe, all right? 
We will. Give me some sugar. So much. All right. See so you later. Lovely to you too, honey. Again. And you Pretty good. Care. You too. Oh, bless you. Chad, it really, really right, has man. been a pleasure and a privilege. Thank you Be so good. much for spending your time. We will. And you. All and right. you. In there. Chad might not have been a fan of our Buick, we, on the other hand, were falling head over heels. As with all cars you truly love, it had to be named. And after a long debate, we decided to christen it Boris. Come on, Boris. So it's officially Boris now. Boris the Buick. So this is what they call the Buick B body. And it is the third most popular car platform in the world. There's the Volkswagen Beetle, there's the Model T does this. Finally, it was time to hit the open road of Route 1, the Pacific Coast Highway. Here we go, here we so go. Here we what are. does that say? Pacific Passing the sign to Pacific Coast, Coast Highway. Highway. You've got Randolph Hearst had a mansion here. Yeah. Uh, you've got John Paul Getty. Wow. And every film star from Cher to Martin Sheen to... You, you name it, they've all lived up here. Wow. It's the place to be. After chatting with Chad, hitting the highway and naming our Buick, day one was done and it was going to take some beating. Day two, and my turn to take the wheel of Boris the Buick. Day one had seen us shimmy our way from LAX Airport to Santa Barbara. Ahead of us was another 230 miles of Pacific coastline to Carmel, and I couldn't wait. Well, this is the Santa Maria wine valley, and it's a bit of the PCH that's a bit boring. Yeah. So you turn off, this is known as Palmer Road, yeah. come up here, and here it is. This is a lovely, lovely detour. And, it, and you can take it, and it takes you off the Pacific Coast Highway and back on. Yeah. And you can stop at little wineries and do tastings and things like this. How lovely. Of all the road trips you could go on, this is the honey, this is the Lulu. It really, really is. So varied, so so wild, so so dramatic, so so much fun. And I am so in love with this car. <laughs> no, I knew as soon as you start driving him. Oh, good old yeah, Boris. It's, it's not just a casual fling. This this car and I are <laughs> so connected. I'm just so loving it. Uh, yeah, OK, so we've gone out of dating. We're now into a full-on oh, relationship. Oh, yeah, unconditional love here, baby. Really? My devotion was about to be tested by the PCH. At the side of the road, we found a treasure trove of dusty classics, all owned by a man called Bob. Jody, and we saw the all these lovely cars, and we, we were just... Very... Dodge Swinger, top banana yellow. I love the colour. 320 about, cubic inch? About 225 horsepower, 312, or 318, sorry, cubic inches. Bob, for, 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 for English viewers, to buy a car like this here in the States, in this really, really good condition, how much would this be? Around twelve to $14,000, so somewhere in that what, that's area. That's eight, eight thousand eight pounds, grand. everybody, are you listening? I want to know what's under okay, everything. Okay, come on, next, next, All next. Right. Now, this is a 1956 Thunderbird. Oh. A 19 what? 1956 oh. Thunderbird with yeah. the Continental yeah. wheel on with the, the back. With the Continental wheel, yeah. Come on, tell us, Bob. No With the portholes and the hard top. With the, the rear kind of oh, a Fiesta red look color. Look the window. Oh. So this is second year of Thunderbird production in coral. Correct. Is this coral pink? It's called Fiesta red. Fiesta red. Really <laughs> nice and original too. Yes. And it's a stick. We did the It's upholstery. a manual. It's a manual. Wow. So. Well, this one's a 63 Valiant. Yeah. yeah. 
And this one's a 1970 Dutch Charger. Charger. Dutch Charger, yeah. Lovely. Look at that. No, yeah, there's even more in here. Whoa! This is a 1960 DeSoto. Wow. Only in America. Only in America could you very, just stop. Very and bad condition. Find all this stuff. It runs. We fired up the motor, <laughs> and it needs a, a fuel pump, and we'll drive it around and check it out, and then replace all the rusted parts. It's just brilliant. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. And good luck with everything. I am good just luck with very tempted by that. Drive little, carefully. I'm very tempted by that little swinger. Mm. Of 14,000 ish. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I can make a deal with you <laughs> if you're willing. There was a moment of temptation, but I couldn't stray from my road trip romance with Boris. That was really, really cool. Only in America yeah. do you find these little places by the side of the road and they are stuffed full of all these treasures that you know nobody has looked at. So this is the original Bob's Barn find yeah. that we just happened to pass. I know. I'm done with 66. Nothing. It is the drive Nothing. of your life. As the end of day two approached, the Pacific coast just kept mesmerizing us. Oh, oh my God! Oh. With Carmel ahead, we'd completed the second leg of our epic journey. But with Santa Cruz, San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge beckoning, the best was surely yet to come. More of our PCH adventure to come, but I have to hand it to you, Jodie, that 68 Buick, what a motor. So cool. Classic American cars of that era, such value for money, 15,000, 20,000 pounds, buys you all that fun. So they will start to go up. And you can bring them back quite cheaply as yeah. well. And you can buy them already here. Sometimes they're cheaper here than they are in the States. Anyway, don't go anywhere as national treasure Jennifer Saunders will be driving her favorite classic car. Coming up, we head back out to the Pacific Coast Highway. Go, baby, go. National treasure Jennifer Saunders tests out one of Italy's best exports. And Bruno Senna throws another classic around the Brooklyn's track. Coming up, a very special treat. What, you taking the rest of the show off? No, we're going to have someone who can tell funny <laughs> jokes. A national institution and a fine comedian, the thoroughly wonderful Jennifer Saunders. Now, I love a classic car. And so, when Jodie and Quentin gave me the chance to drive a classic car, it was like all my dreams come true. I thought something like this, this beautiful 1954 Bentley R-Type. But we're driving in London, and this is 18 foot long. So, I changed my mind. Instead, I'm going to be driving this gorgeous little Italian baby, La Bambina, the Fiat Cinquecento. In fact, it's only got 479 cc's, and we all know that. But this, to me, is the perfect little city car. driving around London in what I would call my perfect small car. It's noisy, that's the first thing you notice. It is a little bit noisy. I'm going to have a little adventure. We ventured into third gear there. It doesn't feel small though, I have to say. It does not feel small. It feels rather lovely. It's like a biscuit tin. It's like a very small biscuit tin and there's a sewing machine in the back powering it, that's what it feels like. And the other thing you have to know is there are no brakes. To stop this car, I am literally willing it to a halt. Come on, little baby. Come on, little baby. It would be the perfect first car. Oh, don't do that, you fool, you idiot. Ah. 
There you see, leaping out of it. No cramp, no nothing. It's the perfect size for me. It's not the car for a giant, let's face it, but it's perfect for me. And look, only takes up half the parking bay, which means people don't get angry with you if you're driving a car like this. They let you out into queues of traffic if you're driving a car like this. Now, I'm going to see how much shopping it can hold. Ooh. Here we are, I've done a, a sort of average amount of fake shopping and I'm, right, so this, this, this is your boot, bonnet, trunk, whatever you like to call it. Um, most of which is taken up rather frighteningly with the fuel tank, which is astounding. But it's strapped on, it's beautifully strapped in there. But I think, probably, probably, it's a lovely tinny noise. Um, the back seat's probably the thing. Yeah, right, here we go. Oh, come on, fake shopping. Where are we going to put you? Right, this is my average amount of fake shopping that I would normally do on a normal day. And actually, there's plenty of room because I'm going to put it all on the back seat where there is a lot of room. In fact, room for two people, if you were desperate, it has to be said. It doesn't feel small. I know it is tiny, but I think because the doors are so thin, it doesn't feel small. world I can't find my perfect small car because actually what I'd quite like to drive around London is an electric car but I think they're all just a bit too blooming ugly and if I look at something like the G Wiz and I think I don't want to look like I'm in Postman and Pat I want to look cool if I'm driving a car I want to drive a car that's got some character that has a little bit of style about it And I just think, why don't Fiat make an electric version of this? It would be, honestly, ideal. <laughs> so that's my challenge to Fiat. Make this into a lovely little electric car, and I think you'd watch your profits go up, mates. I think it would be an absolute winner. Little Fiat. Oh, we haven't shown you the skylight facility. Look. Hello. I love it. I kind of thought that maybe I wouldn't. Maybe it'd be too primitive to drive, and maybe by having a chance to actually drive one, I'd think, no, actually, a modern car's much better. But it's gorgeous. It's just a matter of, you know, getting back into the way of, of driving properly. And this would be lovely if it was electric for you, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Love her. Nobody has ever done a road test no. like that. But Brilliant. she makes a really, really good point, though, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. That we could have some classics battery powered. Absolutely. I mean, the modern Fiat 500, you can get electric, so why not? I mean, I've got an electric car, a Citroen C0. Yeah, I use it huh. every day. And it does 100 miles to one charge, costs you a pound. Unbelievable. You whiz past service stations and you laugh. <laughs> exactly. And to do that in a classic, really, really cool. OK, well, I think we should start a campaign. So get behind us on our Twitter account, which is at classic car underscore TV, hashtag electric 500. Let's do it. Good idea. Yeah. Time now to go trackside and see what our Formula One, Formula E and Le Mans racer Bruno Senna is driving the wheels off now. I'm going to hand you over to our commentator, Jack Nichols. Nestled on the infield of the classic banked Brooklyn circuit lives this. A modern 1200 meter handling track. With its mix of challenging corners, it's perfect for this man, Bruno Senna, to lap some classic race cars. So let's find out what he's driving this time. This one's looking like the shape of a legend. And it is, oh my God. 1955 
going 300 SL. It's one of the most beautiful cars ever made. And I'm sure it's gonna be lovely on this track. Launched at the 1954 New York Auto Show, the Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing is arguably the first supercar pinup. Its game-changing fuel-injected 3-liter engine and slippery aerodynamic shape meant that the SL could achieve a then record-breaking top speed of 160 miles an hour. The SL also enjoyed some success in motorsport, finishing fourth in the 1955 Mille Miglia and winning the Rally Stella Alfina in the same year. It's time for the Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing's flying lap of this Brooklyn circuit in the hands of Bruno Senna down towards the first corner flick. And it looks and sounds absolutely fantastic going into the first corner. It's going to be a bit of a handful. It is a road car on road springs, unlike some of the more race-prepped machines we've had out on the track. For example, the Jaguar E-Type Lightweight, which has the quickest time at the moment. And it's that split that Bruno's going to be challenging now as he comes through the right-hander towards the split line. Here he comes, and he's just over three and a half seconds down, but also very sideways. A real handful out there on the circuit. The 300 SL has actually gone quicker in that first split than the SL Pagoda that we've already had out. That Pagoda, some nine years younger than the 300 SL, so impressive nevertheless. Look how big the steering wheel is in Senna's hands, having to work really hard as he comes through the final corner. Now he's into the strength of the 300 SL, the straight line blast towards the line. Here he comes now, and the time to be 48.284, and it's just over eight seconds down. Well, this was hard work. Very handful, you know, the whole time you're catching the front and the rear, the whole, the whole time, and it's like breaking mid-corner exit all the time fighting the car. It's amazing how this car is like strong and if, as long as you respect it, you can still go. But if you pass a little bit on the limit, then it will bite you pretty bad. I think it's the, the one that will bite you the, the, the hardest of all the other cars. That beautiful 300 SL looked like a real handful round our track, but Bruno managed to get it round in 56.1. 409, which means it sits between the two younger other Mercedes. So not bad for a car that was built in the 1950s. Loving it. And this is the only show where you will see a million pound Mercedes Gullwing being driven like that. Stay with us though, because we will be returning to that Pacific Coast Highway. Coming up, we return to the Pacific Coast Highway. But before we head back stateside, it's time to show you your classic car destiny that might just make you some money. And this first one, here we go, may surprise you. Subaru Impreza Turbo. Now we know this is a hot saloon, but it was the car that put Subaru on the map with Colin McRae winning that rally championship back in 1995. And it was an instant classic. And performance, my goodness, 150 miles an hour and 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. It's got grip, it's got grunt and it's got attitude. But here is the thing. Price-wise, you can still now go out and buy a really, really nice one for 4,000 quid. They've been appreciating over the last year, so we're going up maybe 10%, but it'll carry on continuing. What should you look for? Well, you want a lovely, straight, original 2000 on turbo that hasn't, and this is the critical bit, been messed around with or modified, and they are out there. So look for few owners and a nice parade of dealer stamps in the service history and just factory, factory spec. Because if you do, you've got a car that's going to carry on appreciating because it is an all-time classic. Next, we're going to go back several decades to the Triumph Vitesse. Yes, really. Now look, this of course is a sports convertible, but forget about all that suburban Triumph Herald crossover. These had very decent straight six engines, 1600 or two litre. So performance wise, you're talking a little bit over hundred miles an hour and 60 in around 14, 15 seconds, but they've got overdrive as well. They had lovely snazzy two-tone paint jobs. And if you can find an early car, that's great. 
Price-wise, they are all over the place. Uh, people don't know what they're worth. You've got some guys asking £10,000 for minters, yet you've got other people selling reasonable average cars for as little as £5,000. So there's a real, real opportunity here. What should you look for? Either go for a very, very early 62, 63 straight original lovely car or one of the last 70, 71 two litres. As long as it's a period piece and looks absolutely lovely, you will be fine. Trust me. Now, here we go. We have the Reliance Scimitar Coupe. Now, I know you've never heard of it, but before the GTE Estate, Reliant made a coupe. Now, this is a really cute, cool car, fiberglass body and great Ford engines, straight 6 2.5 or V6 3 litre. So, performance is really good, 120 miles an hour and 0 to 60 in around 11 seconds. The really, really encouraging thing is the money, because at the moment you can still buy a good project car for 3,000 quid and a really lovely mint, mint car for as little as 9,000 pounds. What's going on there? Your touchscreen seems to be very temperamental, doesn't it? What's wrong with it? I have no idea. Anyway, maybe it's time to go back to the Pacific Coast Highway where we had our amazing road trip. Let's damn thing. Our last day promised to be the most spectacular of the lot, with the aim of getting to the Golden Gate Bridge before sunset. But our day started in Carmel, famous for Clint Eastwood and its coffee. Well, this is Carmel. His middle name is Cute. Uh, Clint, it's Clint Eastwood used to be the mayor. Yes, of um, course. And it's immaculate and everything's perfect. But this is why it's low rise, because he's controlled all the planning. And it, it's the way, it's a tourist town and that's, 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 that's good. It's very, very pretty. I once got a parking ticket here for my car being the wrong way round. It wasn't a one-way street, it was because... Don't be daft. No, 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 no. It was pointing in the wrong direction, therefore it wasn't beautiful. What, they all have to, like, face north it's or something? It's going to look good in Carmel. <laughs> that is just fabulous. Day three, the final push for San Francisco. Starting out from Carmel, Boris had 170 miles to cover before our journey's end. But there was so much more to see before sunset. So the last stretch, Gwent, the last stretch, Boris. You've done us proud. We made it to Santa Cruz, just in time for a spot of lunch. Another sweet little American town, unspoiled, no high rises. Yeah. And look, these are clapboard houses. These are lovely. And they've got character. I just never knew this existed. Just another little bit of the Pacific Coast Highway. <laughs> now, now we've got to have some seafood. A fish dozen taco. of your oysters, a fish taco, and... Fish taco, that's it. Another French benefit of the PCH. Oysters, a dozen, 10 pounds, out the Pacific. It's so cool. Aren't they stunning? The ride over there, that was the actual ride used in the film Lost Boys. Unbelievable. So again, you just peel off. You come Whilst here, I could have listened to Quentin talking all day about filming locations of vampire films of the 1980s, we had a goal to reach. And if we were going to see the Golden Gate Bridge before sunset, we had to hit the road. So time to fire up Boris. So, on to San Francisco. Go, baby, go. Oh. Uh -huh. 
first. <laughs> Please get me to the bridge before I know. The sunset. And the traffic is bad. Oh, come on, come on, come on, bridge, come on, come on. With the sun fading almost as fast as our hopes, we finally caught a glimpse of our fabled destination. There it is. Look, yeah, look, 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 look. But we can see it. It is a comforting sight. We're going to make it, Jack. We're going to make it. What a wonderful, wonderful couple of days. I highly, highly recommend anyone that has a chance to do this. It is very special. But you want to be careful about the driver sometimes. Boris, are you ready? Well, look at that. Every mile, every revolution of those Buick's wheels, it's been worth it. Look at that. Thanks to this, what a trip. Look, it's been a really lovely drive. It and we has. haven't rowed, we haven't fought. No, not yet. Not yet, Mr. Wilson. You've been <laughs> the best co-pilot driver ever. That's Thank you true. so much. What a trip. From chatting with Chad, to Bob's barn find, from Carmel Coffee, to Santa Cruz Seafood, and all the moments in between, it's been the drive of a lifetime. And what a car, Boris the Buick. Boris and others just like him can be hired from just £200 a day, so there's no excuses. If you get the chance, get behind the wheel of a classic and drive the Pacific Coast Highway. Boris is waiting. What a trip. I mean, starting in LA, meeting, introducing you to Chad. Chad? And then Big Sur for me. I mean, I was just my jaw was on know, the ground. It was so beautiful. And then Bob with his cornucopia of classic cars. Oh. I mean, for me, that was absolutely fantastic. And I should have bought that Dodge Swinger. I know I should have. Oh. And then Golden Gate Bridge. Oh. And you know, Jade, journeys like that, you always squabble. You always fight. Yeah. But we didn't. We weren't too bad. There was a little moment there where the Towards old the temper end. got up a little bit because I kept on losing Who? everything. Your temper or my temper? No, your temper. No, it wasn't. It was it yours. Was, no, it was your temper. <sighs> At that point, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I must tell you, this is all we have time for. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Nick Wallace takes a hard-hitting look at a very real problem tonight at 9 on Channel 5 in brand new Glasgow's Killing Streets. Before that, they're caught red-handed in Gangs and Guns, caught on camera.